Ukraine's Crimea attacks seen as key to counteroffensive against Russia. This week saw spectacular Ukrainian attacks on the Crimean Peninsula, hitting Russian warships and missiles. Estimates of the damage done ran into billions of pounds and raised the question, is Ukraine getting ready to retake Crimea, which Russia annexed in 2014? Crimea is a Russian fortress, so it is important not to get carried away. The strategy has two main goals, says Oleksandr Musienko from Kyiv's Center for Military and Legal Studies. To establish dominance in the northwestern Black Sea and to weaken Russian logistical opportunities for their defense lines in the south, near Tokmak and Melitopol. In other words, operations in Crimea go hand in glove with Ukraine's counteroffensive in the south. They depend on each other, Musienko says. Let's look at Ukraine's recent successes in Crimea. On Wednesday, long-range cruise missiles supplied by the UK and France dealt a heavy blow to Russia's much-vaunted Black Sea fleet at its home port of Sevastopol. Satellite images of the scene at the Sevmorzovod dry dock repair facility showed two blackened vessels. On Friday, Britain's Ministry of Defense said a large amphibious landing ship, the Minsk, had almost certainly been functionally destroyed. Next to it, one of Russia's Kilo-class diesel-electric submarines, the Rostov-on-Don, used to launch Kaliber cruise missiles hundreds of miles into Ukraine, had likely suffered catastrophic damage. Perhaps equally importantly, the dry docks, vital for maintenance of the entire Black Sea fleet, would likely be out of use for many months, the ministry said. On Saturday, Ukraine offered tantalizing new details. It said special forces had played a key role, using boats and an unspecified underwater delivery means to get ashore before using special technical assets to help identify and target the vessels. But with the fires barely out in Sevastopol, there were more dramatic nighttime explosions as Ukraine blew up one of Russia's most modern air defense systems, an S-400, around 40 miles, 64 kilometers north at Yevpatoria. This was another sophisticated operation that used a combination of drones and Ukrainian-made Neptune missiles to confuse and destroy a key component of Russia's air defenses on the Crimean Peninsula. A significant side note, Russian attempts to use exactly this technique over Kyiv have generally failed. Others have knocked out Russian radar positions on offshore gas platforms and, according to Kyiv, used experimental maritime drones to attack a hovercraft missile carrier at the entrance to Sevastopol Harbor. With its air bases, troop concentrations, training grounds, and the Black Sea Fleet, Crimea has been a key target since Russia's full-scale invasion last year. In Crimea, they still have a lot of stockpiles with artillery shells and other types of weapons, Musienko says. And this is the main logistic supply line for them. Over the months, Kyiv's operations have grown in sophistication, from a drone attack in August 2022, which destroyed an estimated nine Russian aircraft at the Saki Air Base, to the combined drone and missile attacks of today. With more advanced weapons thought to be in the pipeline, Musienko expects Ukraine to launch ever more sophisticated operations. When we get attacks, tactical ballistic missiles. From the United States, I think we will try to use, in one attack, ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and also drones, he says. And that will be a serious problem for Russia's air defense system, he adds. We will try to blind them. Each successful attack, he says, makes the next one easier. We are clearing the way, and it's becoming more simple. Ukraine punches through key Russian line. Generals claim rogue. Russian pilot tried to shoot down RAF jet. The latest reports from Washington suggests the Biden administration is close to approving the ATAS-MS long-range missile system after months of Ukrainian lobbying. It's getting closer, but there's still a lot to do, says retired Ukrainian Navy Captain Andriy Ryzhenko. We need to liberate the Sea of Azov coast and cut the land corridor, he says, referring to Ukraine's slow, grinding offensive in the south. And then there is the Kerch Bridge. Ukraine has been hitting Moscow's lifeline to Crimea for almost a year, 
but Russian heavy equipment still moves along its vital railway. Despite being much better defended now, it remains very much in Kyiv's sights. <laughs>